All right, we are ready for class number 172. Class number 172, I've already shown you how to download the file and have it prepared for you and have all of your images and fonts installed and ready to go. So what we're gonna do to start off class is open up the art file, A-R-T. We'll double click on that one. And from here, we're going to do all of our artwork, okay? So let's go ahead and do Control Zero to zoom in. And I'm gonna start up here just to show you that it has the swatches. And we have the foreground and background layer here. I'm actually gonna start with the background layer. Let's double click on the background layer. And here, I want to go ahead and bring in the logo first. I feel like the logo is going to help us in setting the tone for the colors. So let's double click on the logo. We can go to File, Place, Embedded. And let's go to our Desktop folder in our 172 folder. And remember, we saved all of our images in the Photos folder that we created. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this image in and place it. And I'm gonna make it as large as I can make it here without anything hanging off the artboard. And of course, we'll turn off the other logo there. I'll hit yes to save. And we've already got our logo here and it's watermarked we're going to leave it alone but of course there's some options that we can change regarding the uh, fill and opacity there for the foreground accent i'm going to leave this here because i like that it's the graduation hats and the throwing of those hats it's very um, relevant to the theme here and then i am going to go ahead and change my smart color one I'm gonna leave my Smart Color 2 black for right now. So let's go ahead and double click on Smart Color 1. Now I realize that I have a blue to black going on here and I want to duplicate that. So I'm gonna right click, duplicate layer, double click on that gradient. Now, before we do that, let's go ahead and do a little something here. I'm gonna place, file, place, embed it my logo because I want to pick some colors from the logo and although it's only really yellow black and white I want to make sure I get the right yellow so I'm going to use my color picker tool and I'm going to grab the yellow double click on the foreground swatch and hit add to swatches and I'll just call that one for the color name and I'm going to add that to swatches but I'm gonna make sure that add to my current library is not selected. Okay, so that's color number one. Color number two would be the black here, but I'm just gonna make sure it's pure black. Add to swatches, I'm gonna call that two. And then maybe the white here will be my third color. I'm just gonna make sure it's pure white with all Fs there. And hit add to swatches, call that three. And we have three colors selected, although we are using two colors as a gradient here. So let's go ahead and hit cancel now. I can get rid of my mascot because I already have the colors picked from there and I don't wanna leave more information here than necessary. So let's double click on the gradient here, click on it once more, and I'm gonna change color stop number one to that yellow. Color stop number two, I'll let it be black. And it's gonna fade from yellow to black. Now once I update this smart color, it should take effect in the background image that I have open here. And we'll allow it to finish saving so it can update the smart object. Wonderful. Now smart color two, um, can be updated as well. Right now, Smart Color 2 just happens to be black, but if you want it to be something else, for instance, let's duplicate that layer and let's make it white instead. 
If I close out of this and hit yes to update the changes, everywhere that we once had black will now be white. Now I am officially done with the background, so I am going to make sure, um, oh, let's do this too. Let's right click and let's update all modified content just so that any of the uh, links here that had an exclamation point are all taken care of. Now I can close out of this and hit yes to save or I could have done file save and then exited out of that window. And as you can see now our artwork is updated to the new mascot but now we must change our foreground. So let's double click on the foreground and we have a few items to change here. I think the most significant is the one that says text 5 because it actually has the photos in there. So let's go ahead and update those first. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to right click on one of the images that has the exclamation point, right click on the name of that layer, and go to update all modified content. Anything with an exclamation point should go ahead and update here. It may take a little bit because there are several photos. Okay, and we notice that everything changed through the yellow theme and that our mascot has changed as well. But let's go ahead and change out the photos. Photos number one, two, three, and four. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with photo number one. If you don't know where it is, you can just right click on a photo with your move tool. I like to have auto select turned off and show transform controls turned on so that it will identify what layer I'm touching. But when I right click here, I can also go to photo number one. I'm gonna double click here. And then instead of doing file place embedded, which you can do that as well, I'm gonna show you another technique is that you can drag and drop your image in. And let's see, which one do I want to put? as the image number one. Let's go with this one. And I can drag and drop it instead of doing the file place embedded. And of course I can resize my image. And what I want to do is I want to fade off the bottom here. So let me turn off this photo. And in order to fade off the bottom of the image, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on a layer mask here, which is the rectangle with a circle inside. We notice that it is all white, and we know that white reveals and black conceals. So I'm gonna grab my paintbrush tool, and let's grab a brush of about 400 pixels in size, and make sure the hardness is all the way to zero. If you go to your general brushes, you should see a soft brown brush, and that's what we're using right now. The soft brown brush should have black loaded as the foreground color if you don't see that. Go ahead and hit the default color here. It may bring white to the foreground, so hit your switch button right beside it, and you'll end up with black in the foreground. Once black is in the foreground, you can go ahead and fade off that photo, and you see we're painting on the layer mask and not the actual photo. So let's go ahead and exit out of this and hit yes. And we'll see that this image here updated, photo number one updated. Let's do the same thing for photo number two. We'll drag and drop the image here. All right, and again, we're going to fade off the bottom of the image. Let's choose a layer mask here. Grab our paintbrush. We just have a gorgeous model here. I'm gonna fade off the arm there too, just in case it's hanging out of our layer mask. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of this one and hit yes to save. So there's one, two. Let's change out photo number three the same way. I'm trying to get as much as that photo in there as possible. 
And then of course I'll fade off any areas that are hanging off. So let's do layer mask here. And we're painting with the black. And I'm just gonna make sure that I don't take off too much of that trophy there. I just don't want any hard lines. All right, let's exit out and hit yes to update. And then photo number four, we'll double click on that one. And this time let's do the file place embedded just in case we forgot that that way if your drag and drop doesn't work, file place embedded. And we'll do number, this one, this will be number three. All right, and again, we'll add the layer mask and fade off here to the bottom. Turn off the previous image there and hit yes to save. And now we have all four images updated. Of course, you may want to move or resize any of these around. And if that's the case, just make sure you're on your move tool and you have show transform controls on. And then you can move around or resize those images. All right, now as far as my logo here, I have an inner stroke on there and I want to change that to an outside stroke. There we go. And I'm making sure that I'm saving. So you can go file, save, command S or, uh, or control S on the PC, command S on the Mac. I think everything looks good. Now you may need to change the 2022 to another year. So if that's the case, you'll double click here use your back arrow backspace and change it to whatever year you need once you're done just make sure you select your move tool and select a different layer just to make sure that everything is in place nothing's hanging out now this time instead of just exiting out of here we did a lot of work so i'm going to go file save and let it save first and then i'm going to exit out of the file if you ever forget to hit save after you try to exit from a file, you will lose your changes. So the safest thing to do is to save and then exit out of the work, out of that tab. Now you see that this has a uh, text number or underscore five has updated, but I still have text one, two, and this logo here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure that the logo is going to change accordingly. So I'm gonna right click and go to update all modified content. Okay, you see our logo changed here. Perfect. Now we need to change text one and text two here. So text one, I'm going to double click. I already installed my font, so I should be great there. In order to change the color here, all I have to do is right click on the smart color one and update all modified content. It should automatically select my yellow colorway now. And if I want to change it from first name, last name, I can double click on the T here and type whatever I want. I'm gonna leave it as first name, last name, but of course, you know that you can change that out. Do the same thing to, to the uh, second text here. Right click on the smart color one and let's go ahead and update all, modify content to update that colorway. Beautiful, let's close it out now. And our foreground is now designed. So what we can do at this point, you can move anything around. If your, let's say your first name or last name was really long, um, you can make sure that it fits within the artboard here and you may have to squish it in order to do so. Or in this case, maybe we we'll wanna stretch it out. But you wanna make sure that your drop shadow and nothing is hanging below the artboard because it will get cut off. All right, so our foreground is done now. If we close out of the foreground, we can hit yes to save, or we could have done file, save, 
Control S or Command S. And then when we close out of that tab, it would automatically update. So this is it. Um, if I want to see what this looks like as a shirt, I can go ahead and throw on my guides here so I can see what's going to get cut off, what's going to show for the smallest and the largest of shirts. Right. And let's say I want to go back to black for the color down here. I can always go to my Smart Color 2 and update it. And here I'm just going to go to update all modified content just to make certain that everything is up to date. And let's go ahead and double click on Smart Color 2. Let's say I want to use black instead. I should be able to close this out and hit yes to update. Now because I updated an area, for instance, where my white is down here, I need to actually go to my background and then I will have to right click on my smart color too or anything anything that you change that has an exclamation point go ahead and update all modified content and now when we close out of this and hit yes to save we'll see what it looks like with the black at the bottom of the shirt instead of the white and if you like that change then go ahead with it if you want to bring it back to the white at the bottom then you can do that as well but that concludes uh, changing out this skin pack. And of course, uh, you can use this for all of your other needs. And we will do several classes teaching you how to use the atomizer. So this is, is essentially ready for print. If you go ahead and do file save as a JPEG, you can print this out right now. Or you can use your, um, I would take this off right here disable that layer mask and use this entire artboard in order to do your split template for your all over shirts. And if you're doing large format printing, I would enable this and print just a t-shirt or I would disable this and put a couple of socks here and I can even do a couple of masks up here at the top. And then that way you can utilize the most of that rectangle and how many presses you may have to do if you're doing a small small format press like a 16 by 20 or if you're doing a large format press you may be able to in one press get some socks and a mask under there in the same press all right that concludes everything that you need to do for this particular template i hope you all enjoy the template i hope that you all create some magic and some profit i appreciate you i love you dearly and until next time bye, bye.